This tutorial video explains the navigation and features of SimTix. You'll see examples from specific modules, but what is covered here applies to all modules regardless of what you're studying. SimTix is designed to work on most internet connected devices. We recommend an internet connection with a download speed of at least 1.5 megabits per second or higher. As long as your device is one of the browsers listed here or a newer version, you will be able to access the SimTix content, whether you have a Windows or Mac laptop, a Chromebook, iOS, or Android device. When using the simulations, we do recommend using a tablet or laptop size screen, since a small smartphone screen can make it difficult to place instruments accurately. When you log into the SimTex website, the dashboard is the first thing you'll see. However, if you log in via your school system, you may be taken directly to a specific module, which may bypass the dashboard completely. Let's briefly look at the dashboard. At the top is a quick access link to the last module you were studying. You will only see this after you have accessed at least one module. The dashboard also has your progress summary and a menu of all the modules you have access to. At the top of that menu list is a search field that allows you to quickly find the module you'd like to access. Type in a keyword or part of a word, and the system will find any modules with that text string in their title. If you hover over a module image, you'll see quick link buttons for the different components within that module. Explore will open the Explore component, which contains text and video. A will bring you to the anatomy, S will launch the simulation, and Q will bring you to the quiz. You can also click on the picture for that module, which will open the Explore component. Within each module, the buttons on the right side of the page let you navigate to whichever component you'd like. Clicking on a button for Explore, Anatomy, Simulations, or Quiz will open the corresponding option. If you want to go back to the dashboard or navigate to a different module, click on the hexagon button at the top left of the page to open the menu in the sidebar. The Explore section contains the text and video. This is a good place to start studying a module since this is where the procedure is explained step-by-step step for you in words and visuals. At the top of the page, you can reference the learning objectives, key terminology, which is like a mini dictionary, and pre-procedure considerations for this module. To read through the text, use the normal scroll controls on your device, or use the scroll bar on the right-hand side of the text window. The text window contains illustrations and hyperlinks to provide more information. Clicking on an image will enlarge it, and clicking on a blue hyperlink will open a definition if it's a key term. Or, it will open a new window to take you to the relevant external website for reference. Some images in the text include animations to help demonstrate key concepts. Click on the thumbnail image to enlarge it, and click the play button to view the animation. At the bottom right of the page, there's a timeline showing the steps of this procedure. The step you're currently viewing is highlighted. This timeline provides a way to navigate through the procedure. Hover over the sections of the navigation timeline to view the step numbers and names, and click on a step to jump right to it. The video and the text are synchronized, aligned with the steps in the procedure. This means that as you read through the text, the video keeps pace with you, and vice versa, with each step of the procedure. This allows you to quickly navigate back and forth between related sections of the video and text. To play the video, click on the play button on the video. We recommend using headphones to listen to the audio soundtrack. You can click on the enlarge button to get a larger view and click on the enlarge button again to expand it to full screen view. The next option in the right hand navigation menu is the anatomy component. This gives you access to 2D images and 3D models that you can explore, showing the anatomy that is related to this procedure. This is a good way to review what you've learned in anatomy and physiology classes in the context of a specific procedure. At the top of the page, you will find options to view different layers of anatomy so you can look inside the body. There are usually two to four layers of anatomy in each module. Tap the buttons in the navigation bar to view the different layers, or you can slide the blue button across. 
At the bottom of the screen are instructions for zooming in and out, and for rotating the 3D images. These will vary according to the device you're using. Tap the X in the corner of the window to close it, and view the full screen. In this example, there are three layers in the anatomy. The first layer is usually the surface anatomy to help you learn and recognize external landmarks. You can look through that to see the next layer, which in this example is the bony structure of the skull. And then you can drill down further to see the relevant internal organs. To the right of the anatomy navigation bar, you'll find icons with more information about the anatomy resources in this module. This label icon tells you how many structures are labeled in this particular layer. This one has 16, which are indicated by the blue dots on the image. The 3D icon here means that there's a 3D image available too. You can click or tap on each blue dot to view the label for that structure. Where a label has a question mark symbol on it, this means that there's a text description for that structure. Click on the question mark to view it. You can also use the label icon to turn on all the labels at once. Click or tap it again to turn off the labels. A 3D icon on a label lets you know when there is a three-dimensional model available. Click that part of the label to open the three-dimensional model. Labels and descriptions are available here too, and work in the same way. You can rotate this 3D image and also zoom in and out. Tap outside the 3D image to close it. The next option in the navigation menu is simulation. When you navigate to a simulation, you can choose whether to use Learn Mode or Test Mode. Let's start with Learn Mode. Click on Choose a Scenario to pick the simulation scenario you want to launch. Unless your instructor tells you different, for a new module, it's best to start with Scenario 1, which has slightly more detailed guidance than the others. Click on a scenario number to load that simulation in Learn Mode. The first page of every simulation provides background information about the type of procedure or the patient. This is important information since it may affect how you need to perform the procedure. Click anywhere on the page to continue. Simtic simulations have different types of steps. We'll go through each of these in turn, so you know how to interact with each step type. Some simulation steps will ask you a multi-choice question. Hover your mouse over the answer choices and the system will highlight them in green or red to indicate the correct and incorrect responses. Green means correct, and red means incorrect. The system shuffles the answers every time you do a simulation, so the correct answer won't always be in the same place. If you answer incorrectly, an error message will appear. If you are correct, the system will let you know and take you to the next step. After you've answered a step correctly, Simtix will often play a short video clip to show what the step looks like in real life. This will help you build up a mental picture of the whole procedure. A prompt is available near the top of each step, explaining what you need to do. If you don't see the prompt text, click on Show to display it. If a prompt obstructs part of the background image that you need to see, just click Hide to hide it. In some steps, you need to select an item from the Tools panel and place it in the correct location on the background image. We call this a hotspot step. Hover your mouse over the different items in the tools panel, and learn mode will indicate which are correct and incorrect, either with a red cursor or by highlighting the correct item in green. Simtix shuffles the order of the items in the tool panel, so check before you select one. Once you've selected the correct instrument, you must place it in the correct location. As you move the instrument around the screen, it will have a bullseye symbol that pulses red or green to let you know whether you have reached the correct location. If it's red, you're not in the correct location yet. When you move the instrument to the correct location, the bullseye symbol will turn green. Once you see these green indicators, click or tap to finalize the placement for that step. In some hotspot steps, the correct anatomical location may be a little difficult to find. This would be the same if you were with a real patient and since Simtex reflects real life, it requires care and accuracy in the simulations too. Use Learn Mode to become fully familiar with the correct placement in each scenario before you do the simulations in test mode. For certain steps, 
you will likely be asked to manipulate an instrument by changing its angle or depth, or moving it in a specific way, such as rotating or sliding. In each case, do this by using click and drag to move your cursor either horizontally right to left, or vertically up and down. The direction varies according to the particular step. If you have a touchscreen, use your finger to swipe instead of clicking and dragging. You do not need to have your cursor or finger directly on the instrument in order to move it. In some simulation steps, there is a picture-in-picture -picture function where an embedded image on the screen changes when you move the selected instrument in a different area. Watch the embedded image, in this example the ultrasound image, to check when you are in the correct location. In some steps, you need to interact with a console on a piece of equipment. This is not meant to represent any particular brand of machine, but is designed to give you an idea of the types of controls you will encounter on equipment in the workplace, and the type of adjustments you'll need to make during a procedure. Simtix uses the same green and red indicators to denote correct and incorrect options. When you have completed a procedure, Simtix will calculate and display a score for you based on the steps you got correct and incorrect. If you don't see your score on screen, this means that Simtix hasn't calculated it yet and it won't be able to update your logbook. You may need to click one more time on the screen to ensure the score is calculated and displayed. In Learn Mode, you can access help at any time. Click on the navigation button at the bottom right of the screen. Then click on the question mark symbol to get help for the current step. For hotspot steps, there may be an image showing you the correct location to place the instrument. Also, if you perform a step incorrectly three times in a row, the help screen will automatically display. A special feature in Learn Mode gives you the ability to jump backwards and forwards to specific steps in the simulation. Click on the navigation button to view a timeline of the whole procedure. Here you can either select a step number or click on a step icon in the timeline to navigate to that step. Each icon in the timeline indicates a different type of step. For instance, the icon with three bullet points indicates a multi-choice question step. The bullseye means a hotspot step. And the icon with three frames is a step where you manipulate an instrument. With the timeline feature, you can go back to a section of the simulation that you just had difficulty with, or jump ahead to specific steps you need more practice with. Test mode simulations function in a similar way to learn mode simulations. There are a few important differences. When you click Start Test, the system will randomly select a scenario for you. You cannot choose a specific scenario for test mode. You will also notice that when you're answering questions, browsing the tool panel, or selecting where to place an instrument, you don't see any green or red color cues to let you know which step is correct or incorrect. In test mode, you need to demonstrate your knowledge of the procedure without help. For the same reason, help is not available in test mode. You're flying solo. Also remember that Simtech shuffles the items in the tool panel, so the correct item won't always be in the same place in the panel. Since there are no green or red color cues in test mode, you'll need to check the instruments carefully before selecting one. If you answer a step incorrectly in test mode, the system will display an error message and you must retry that step in order to continue. The error will be reflected in your logbook record. Another important distinction is that in test mode, you cannot use the timeline to navigate to other steps. Test mode is designed to simulate completing the procedure from beginning to end, just like in real life. So you must complete all steps in the scenario in order to receive a score. As for learn mode simulations, when you finish a test mode simulation, Make sure that you see your score displayed on the screen. That way you know that the score will be recorded in your logbook. You can repeat learn mode and test mode simulations as often as you want, until you feel confident and competent. However, your school may take a score from a specific session on a specific date, so check with your instructor in case there are specific details for your class. The final option in the navigation menu is the quiz component. The multi-choice quizzes are designed to help you learn and test yourself on the theoretical information that cannot be easily tested in a simulation. Similar to the simulations, each quiz has two modes. The OWL quiz is a standard multi-choice quiz, and the FLASH quiz is the same, 
but lets you set a timer for each question to give yourself a more challenging test. Each quiz contains 25 questions, pulled from a larger question bank. The questions are presented in a random order, and the answer options for each question are shuffled. This means that you get a different quiz each time. In the OWL quiz, you will not be timed when answering each question, and can take your time to recall or find the correct answer. On each question, select the answer you believe to be the correct one, and then click Submit. You will receive immediate feedback indicating if you got this question correct or incorrect. A red cross means your answer was incorrect. A green check mark shows the correct option. As you go through the quiz, the system tracks how many correct and incorrect answers you get. When you finish the quiz, the system will calculate a score for you, corresponding to how well you did. As for the simulations, make sure you see your score displayed on the screen before you exit the module. The score and the total time you took will then be recorded in your logbook. The flash quiz functions in a similar way, but lets you set a timer of either 20, 10, or 5 seconds per question to select an answer. This will enable you to demonstrate how well you understand the content with your speed of recall. Answer the questions the same way you would in the OWL quiz, but note that you will be marked incorrect if you do not answer in the set time, even if the answer itself was correct. From the student dashboard, you will find a logbook button in the bottom right corner of the page. If you're in a module, you will find the logbook button at the top right of the page. The logbook has two tabs, log and summary. The log displays a record for every time you have access Simtex, which module, your best scores, and your study time for each module, starting with the module you accessed most recently. Use the forward and back buttons to navigate to previous dates as well. To view more details about a session, select a module by clicking on it. You will now see details about that session in the bottom left of the screen, outlining what activities you accessed and completed, including time spent on that activity and the score you received. If you click on a completed activity, you will see more details to the right of that window, showing what occurred during that activity. In this case, I've clicked on a completed simulation, and the system shows what errors I made during that attempt. The Log tab also gives you access to two reports that you can save and print. The full report contains detailed data for every module you have studied, your study session dates and times, completed quizzes and simulations, and simulation errors. The detail report provides the same detail, but only for the currently selected module. The second tab is the Summary tab. This tab gives you summarized data for each module, with one line per module. The data includes your total study time and your best, average, and most recent scores across all quizzes and test simulations for each module. When you achieve the minimum criteria for certificates of completion for a specific module, you will find a download button here in the Summary tab in the Certificate column for that module. To earn a certificate of completion, you need at least 60 minutes of study time in that module and a minimum of 80% score in a test simulation. If a particular module does not have any simulations, then you will need a minimum of an 80% score on that module's quiz. There is a third report available in the Summary tab, which provides a printable version of the data on this tab. To return to the dashboard from the logbook, click on the Simtix hexagon symbol at the top of the page. Enjoy your learning! Mm -hmm.